Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Welcome to another episode of the Acquia Podcast. In an interesting twist this week, there is no live video. Um, welcome to technology, but uh, most of the point of a podcast is the audio. I am really, really thrilled to be talking with someone I've known for several years and someone I've worked for for several years. I've got Tom Erickson, the CEO of Acquia, with me today. And Tom, thanks so much for coming on. I'm really excited uh, to have this chance to talk with you. Could you introduce yourself and maybe tell everyone something about you that we don't know? Sure. Hi, uh, well, I'm Tom Erickson. I'm, I'm the CEO of Acquia, and I uh, have uh, been part of Acquia since the beginning. Um, met Dries and Jay in the middle of 2007 as the company was being created and, and helped uh, on a non-exec role um, until I joined a year later as the CEO. Um, probably the best thing people wouldn't know about me is that I'm actually dialing in right now from a remote location on the Mississippi River in Wisconsin, and uh, that's where I this is where I grew up. How did you first encounter Drupal? Had you heard of it before you met Dries and Jay? I had not actually. Uh, I was introduced by Michael Scott, who I've known for 25 years, and Michael um, was incubating Acquia uh, at his offices in Waltham, Massachusetts, and introduced me to Jay and Dries saying, hey, maybe you guys would like each other. And that's kind of how that all started. The first time you met Jay and Dries, what did they tell you about Drupal? Well, basically that uh, Dries had started Drupal, you know, in his storm room, that it had uh, the classic story about uh, Dries supporting MTV um, just by coincidence. Uh, of course, I'd had a long history with open source already, so I was very familiar with open source. In fact, my first job in 1980 was with a company that had grown out of open source, um, out of a project at MIT, and had built what became a public company from that uh, open source. So there was nothing unusual about that, uh, but what was unusual was really how predominant I thought Drupal was in the market already, even back in 2007, which you know, is nothing compared to how popular it is today. How about you compare Drupal then to Drupal now from your perspective? Well, I think um, the best thing I could compare are, are the people who use it and, and how they use it as opposed to the product itself. Uh, my focus at Acquia has, has always been on the go-to-market as opposed to specifically the product, which I, I really leave up to Dries to, to think about. So the real difference is, um, first and foremost, the number and kinds of organizations that use it is, is much broader than, than it was eight years ago, whether they're consumer um, packaged goods companies like SEB Miller or Miller Coors uh, or life sciences companies like Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. Um, those large organizations were, were not adopting Drupal in a big way. Another thing that was happening at the time was people were hitting limits in their ability to, ex, um, to scale Drupal. I can remember a conversation with Kieran and Dries with Disney back in early 2009, actually, so even a couple of years after that, where Disney was struggling with some of their modestly, today we <coughs> describe as modest, page uh, requirements and today if I look and say what people are scaling to you look at something like weather.com with billions of page views per month the, the world has come a long way in terms of their understanding of how scalable Drupal is, how sophisticated, how ready it is for the enterprise um, it's being used in situations today where people are deploying hundreds and thousands of Drupal sites in their organizations where uh, I'd say back in 2007, it was used in a few isolated places inside of an enterprise. And, of course, lots of people thought about 
is it Drupal or Joomla or WordPress in terms of what should I use? And today, uh, our conversation is, is it Drupal or Adobe or Sitecore? A uh, very different thing. We, um, you know, competing with the main proprietary systems as opposed to thinking about ourselves first and foremost as an open source product. I believe that you've worked a lot in the world of classic enterprise technologies as well. How is running an open source based business different from what you experienced at companies like BAN or, or Systemnet and, and other stops along your career path? Sure. Well, there are many stops. If you get old enough, Jim, you can uh, stop many times in your tech career. So uh, um, my past is mostly enterprise software, uh, a couple of detours. Uh, and the difference is uh, with open source, first and foremost, the, the power and the innovation of the community is unbelievable around open source. And we realize that this is a huge um, advantage. So that's the, the first thing. There's no notion of a, of a roadmap prison, as some folks have called it to me, which is you, you ask your proprietary software company, hey, I need this capability, and they put it in their roadmap, and maybe it comes out in three years, or maybe it, it doesn't ever come out. Um, that's the first thing that goes. Uh, so there's tremendous amounts of innovation. There's a tremendous feeling of community and people around the world working together, even though it's this notion of coopetition where uh, agencies might compete with each other, yet they all contribute to a common good. And, and that's a very wonderful dynamic that I think is the future of, of software, um, actually, uh, because of the the difficulty and expense of developing software today is just um, is, is getting much higher. Of course, there's challenges with open source, and the first and foremost are that, you know, in Drupal there are, you know, literally thousands of modules that you uh, can choose from, and while that selection is great, it's daunting. And another issue is, of course, you know, assurances that if something goes wrong, how will you mitigate your risk and and that's, of course, why we started Acquia. So Acquia's mission is not simply to go in and say, hey, buy our software, and after you buy it, maybe you're going to be successful. Our, our mission is to make you successful using something that you opt you know, to do. You, you, you're not tied into working with Acquia to be able to work with Drupal. Uh, so our services have to be above and beyond in order to be compelling enough. So you know, working hard to always be that organization that has a compelling offering to work with such a powerful uh, product is, is another challenge and difference from, from proprietary software companies. What's an unexpected benefit or, or experience that, that you've had working with open source software, being in the open source business? What's something you discovered along the way that you, you know, I, I, I imagine that the story of risk mitigation of, um, always giving value add as a service provider, the free availability and exchange of information. Those are things that you pretty much knew you were getting, got, you were getting into. But, but what happened along the way that you never would have thought uh, you'd have seen? That's a great question. Um, I have to think about that for a second. I think the the robustness and the vibrancy of the community for Drupal specifically. I, I don't want to say it's open source in general. I think it's Drupal in particular that did surprise me. And that was a very pleasant surprise in terms of how active the community is, how um, responsive they are to each other, that developers entering the community um, really enjoy the experience of, of having that camaraderie between other developers and ability to solve problems without feeling, uh, um, you know, sort of alienated or, or inferior. And I talk about these problems. I thought, I think about the creativity that they might use to solve a particular problem in creating custom modules or, or doing patches for code as opposed to, you know, help with a specific problem and a bug that they're working with because we knew we could help people with that. But how the community works together is is really quite um, is quite fun to see. It's really one of my favorite groups of humans. The the feeling of being in the middle of 
thousands, tens of thousands of smart people working together to solve hard, hard problems is, is, is really amazing. And then so many in the Drupal community have, are, are idealists, have really idealistic backgrounds and want to help make the world a better place. And, and we're able to do that and we're able to help each other do that. And I, I love that feeling every day. Uh, every day I have anything to do with Drupal. So, so I get what you're saying there. It's a, it's a real bonus. It's not, you know, it's really not just about the software here. What do you think the coolest thing um, is that Acquia has done for Drupal? Well, I think uh, I'm going to get very product focused here, uh, Jam. There's probably two or three things I'd like to talk about, but I think um, we've done something very cool uh, out of what we started with Drupal Gardens and now has evolved into Site Factory, which enables enterprises to do something that they've had as a major, major pain point for a very long time, which is the ability to run tens and hundreds of sites in a governed model, whether you're governing them from a perspective of the of a marketing side, of a consistent brand uh, across many countries, many campaigns, many products, or whether you're governing it from a security, reliability, maintenance perspective, more from an IT perspective. You know, what we're doing there is is not only good for Drupal, it's, it's really good for the market uh, in general. And it allows organizations like Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson to have hundreds and thousands of sites at a fraction of the cost that you would if you were in a, a different, more proprietary mode and uh, this this model is being adopted not just in in areas like life sciences but in consumer goods and government in uh, we have a client in the dental uh, um, uh, healthcare business so it's you know, it's quite broad and that's opening up a whole new world for Drupal um, for enterprises that uh, I'm very very excited about Acquia's first employee was Gabor Hoichi, and late... well, he was the third because you have to count Jay and Dries as the first two. Okay, so my, my numbering my numbering system was two co-founders, and the first person they hire, um, yeah. right? <laughs> but um, Gabor was the the first hire, and Jay and Dries hired him right after he finished his studies in 2007 and they paid him to work on Drupal 6 full time to get yep. to make it as as good as it possibly could be and to get it out the door uh faster yep over the years acquia has built up um not only an enormous number of drupalists in the technical side of things who maintain modules and contribute and are very active members in the drupal community we also have the office of the CTO, which has a number of people who also work full time on Drupal, can you talk about Acquia's history of contribution to the Drupal project? Sure. Um, I think uh, we, we can't limit it just to those organizations, that organization, and those folks, though, because um, since we started, I would say there's probably two or two or two hundred and fifty people in the in the Acquia team that have contributed to Drupal. Um, we do it every day, actually, uh, because of our clients that we work with we are contributing back. Um, when we built Drupal Gardens, Drupal Gardens was done um, at the time that Drupal 7 was being worked on. And we did a number of things just to get Drupal Gardens out the door. Now, as I mentioned, Site Factory which included lots of patches, uh, performance things. I can remember Jacob Singh working specifically on um, Drupal 7 performance out of India. Uh, and we had designers working on completely retooling interfaces of things like views to make it easier to use that were on the Acquia uh, payroll. So in our history, in our, our give back mentality is, a, is, is long. Um, and uh, it's a part of who we are. We realize that um, we are part of the Drupal community, and for us to succeed, we will uh, help the Drupal community along, and, um, and because we also benefit from the community and, and what they do. So 
while we are, as an organization, the single largest contributor to Drupal, um, we uh, are not at all a majority contributor to Drupal. And it's a concept that Dries and I call community open source as opposed to commercial open source, where if you take other projects, many other projects, most of the contributions to the project come from a commercial entity, uh, a specific commercial entity. And uh, that's not the case with Linux, and that's not the case with Drupal. We're very proud to be part of that community, but realize that um, it's always uh, lots of decisions along the way to decide um, uh, the best way of contributing uh, while we also advance our company. So. I like that term, community open source, that expresses really well the, the differentiator between Drupal and, and a number of other projects. I, my first job at Acquia, I was on the engineering team when we only had one, which is a funny thought itself nowadays. Um, and I was on that team that built Drupal Gardens. And, and I remember day after day installing incredibly early pre-alpha versions of Drupal 7 and filing a lot of bug reports against that. And uh, oh, the good old days, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so Tom, what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Well, I think first and foremost, a Drupal 8 from an architecture and from a capabilities perspective is a monumental release. Uh, Dries and I have talked about it a lot. We, we think of Drupal 8 as the, the biggest incremental Drupal release in the history of Drupal in terms of new capabilities, new structure, a new promise. Um, it really takes uh, content and, and commerce to a, a new level. Um, it's even something an analyst, an industry analyst, has called the most important release in the entire market for the last five years. So it's it's pretty significant, um, and the number of different things in it, um, I think, are, are very exciting from user interface improvements to um, being totally mobile first. But perhaps I'm most excited by the API mentality that Drupal 8 has, where every single piece of information, every single node and, and uh, entity is addressable through an API. And to me, that is, you know, this is the foundation of the next generation of, of software, particularly software in the cloud. And um, it's very exciting. I'm very, very excited about how Drupal 8 can be so easily integrated into the new kind of gigantic modular applications that are being written. So, for example, you need a content repository or content management. Well, Drupal's extremely, extremely good at that. And it doesn't have to be tied to a web front end. It can be running anything you want, and it can ingest the data from anywhere you want. Or, you know, it can simultaneously run native apps and output a website. I think you. I think you hit the nail on the head as far as uh, you know where the web is going and where whatever it is after the web that we're heading towards this this digital future, the Internet of Things. And I'm I'm really excited that Drupal Eight is, as far as I can tell, really perfectly positioned to play a leading role in that. And uh, yeah, um, I think we've got great chances to capitalize on it. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks again for for taking the time to talk with me. Thanks. See you, Jim.